With that in mind, I set out to double my data set by watching some other YouTubers and tallying their multi-rolls as well. Honestly, I fully expected their results to conform roughly to mine and prove me right, but honestly, they didn't. Welcome fans of Fate Grand Order, I am Avon, you are watching FGO Tips, and today we are concluding our trilogy on the math of multi-rolls. Sorry about that cliffhanger last time. It honestly was not my intention to do that. When I started working on that video, I thought I had an answer, but as I got closer and closer to finishing the video, I realized I was wrong and I had a little more digging to do. I know it's been a little while since the last time, so I'll try to catch everyone up quickly. The game promises us at least one 4 star or above card and at least one servant, but the exact way this happens is not really explained. Last time I presented three different hypotheses about how this might work. If you're looking for an explanation of the three, definitely check out that last video, but just to make sure everyone is on the same page, here is the summary version. After examining my 49 multi-rules, I found that my data pointed towards Hypothesis 1 or Hypothesis 2 as the most likely source of truth, but in an effort to be more thorough, I decided to collect more data to see if everyone else could corroborate my results. A lot of you correctly noted that there is a danger of bias creeping in here, because people are more likely to post their successful pulls than the boring ones, and if I'm only looking at the best summons without any of the failures, the math is going to be extremely skewed. In an effort to reduce that as much as possible, I tried to stick with people that posted regularly, frequently, and preferably by livestream. Anyone recording their own roles in advance might opt to skip posting it if it's dull, so I'm hoping it's less likely they'll take down an existing livestream after it's already aired. To that end, I started out with the Shotgun Shogun, mostly because I knew he already streamed lots of polls and had them compiled into a handy playlist already. Thanks for making my life just a little bit easier. I'm sure all of my viewers are already aware of him, but if not, you should definitely check him out. After running through hours of rolling streams, I managed to tally 79 multi-rolls. And what I noticed? surprised me. He was luckier with 5 star servants to be sure, but the biggest difference to me was how he kept getting more servants than CEs in almost every pull. By the end, I had counted 42% 3 star servants and less than 32% 3 star CEs. This was crazy compared to my own results, and crazier still, it looked a lot like Hypothesis 3, which I thought I had debunked already. So was he really lucky, or was I really unlucky? Turns out doubling my data didn't confirm my results, just made me question them even more. Soberoni from GNA Reviews is my favorite source for Servant Spotlights, check those videos out if you haven't yet. I knew he had streamed a bunch of banners also, so I tallied 43 multi-rolls from him. After that I turned to K Collections, another consistent roller, and found 47 multi-rolls to tally. Now, before I go any further, I want to thank these channels for unknowingly volunteering their data for this study. They are all awesome, and you should check them out, links in the description below. Anyway, what did I find out? When it comes to pulling 5 star servants, the shotgun shogun is king. In fact, he also had the highest percentage of 4 star servants, and the highest percentage of 3 star servants. The highest percentage of servants overall. Shotgun Shogun, I don't know what your trick is sir, but you are pulling servants like nobody's business. The highest percentage of 5 star CEs though, that honor goes to Soberoni. In fact, the videos from GNA Reviews had the highest percentage of 5 star cards in general, now, what category did I win? Um, well, I pulled a higher percentage of CEs than anyone else. Or, you know, in other words, a lower percentage of servants than anyone else. So I guess I didn't really win anything. Thankfully though, I did not have the lowest percentage of 5 star servants. That unfortunate honor goes to K Collection, sorry man. So, what did I learn apart from everybody's luck ranking? My summons were distinctly atypical. <laughs> Even though my data pointed away from Hypothesis 3, everyone else's data seemed to point towards it. If this was a question of more 5 star servants, I might have suspected bias was the cause, that people were only posting their good pulls. But the differences were elsewhere. The breakdown between 3 star servants and 3 star CEs in particular was very noticeable. I had slightly less CEs than servants, but everyone else had way less CEs, to the point where it seemed Hypothesis 3 had to be closer to truth than 1 or 2. But something else about 3 still bothered me. Even the king of 5 star servants himself, the shotgun shogun, was not scoring 1.5% SSR servants. When the best roller in my dataset is below what should be the average, I can't help but feel it's still not quite right. 
Determined to see if Hypothesis 3 was on the right track, I decided to test 9 new variations of the idea. Each one started the same, with 8 regular pulls, but each one varied in the way the last 2 cards were determined. I tested 2 different ways to get at least 1 servant, and 5 different ways to get at least 1 4 star or better card. By mixing and matching all of these, you can get 10 different hypotheses in total. The two ways to promise a servant I tested were two things we had actually talked about in previous videos. First, make a roll assuming that only servants are possible. This means that 1 in 44 times we'll get a 5 star servant here. Second, make a roll assuming anything but a servant will be converted into a 3 star servant. This means 5 star servants stay at 1% for this roll. I tested 5 possible ways to promise the 4 star or better card. First, make a roll assuming only 4 and 5 star cards are possible. This means that 1 in 20 times we'll get a 5 star servant here. Second, make a roll assuming only 4 and 5 star CEs are possible. This means we have a 0% chance of getting a 5 star servant, but a 4 in 16 chance of getting a 5 star CE. Thirdly, make a roll assuming any 3 star servant is bumped up to a 4 star servant and any 3 star CE is bumped up to a 4 star CE. For the fourth, make a roll assuming any 3 star card will be bumped up to a 4 star CE. And finally, for the fifth, make a roll assuming anything that isn't a 4 or 5 star CE will be bumped up to a 4 star CE. This includes even servants. The first of these 10 possible combinations is what we call Hypothesis 3 in the last video, so I'm gonna call the other 9 combinations Hypothesis 4 through 12. Now, let's nickname Hypothesis 4 Servants Only plus 4 or 5 star CEs only, and let's start by calculating the odds of getting a 5 star servant. For the ninth card, we eliminate everything but the servants, so the percentage looks like this. This gives us a 1 in 44 chance of getting a 5 star servant, which means about 2.3% of the time. For the last card, we pick any 4 or 5 star craft essence. Now we see a 4 in 16 chance of pulling a 5 star CE, an impressive 25% of the time. Unfortunately, this card has a 0% chance of being a 5 star servant, which reduces the overall appearance of 5 star servants compared to Hypothesis 3. Knowing all of this, we can calculate the average overall rate of 5 star servants like this. 1% for the first 8 cards means 0 0.01 times 8. 2.3% for the 9th card means that we add 0 0.23. Since the odds of getting a 5 star servant from the last card are now 0%, we don't have to add anything, and our total is 0 0.103. Because we added up 10 cards to get this number, we divide by 10 to get an average of 0.0103, or about 1.03%. This is much closer to our real data than the 1.5% calculated using Hypothesis 3. If you repeat the process for 4 star servants, you see that 0 0.03 times 8 plus 0 0.68 divided by 10 comes out to about 3.08%. And for 3 star servants, we take 0.4 times 8 plus 0.909 and divide by 10 to get 41.09%. With craft essences, the math is similar. For 5 stars, we plug in 0 0.4 for the first 8 cards, 0 for the 9th card, and 0.25 for the 10th card. This comes out to about 5.7%. For 4 stars, we plug in 0.12 and 0.75 to get 17.1%. And for 3 stars, we plug in 0.4, 0, and 0 to get 32%. If you look at the average difference between the predicted values and the actual values, you can see that this new fourth hypothesis performs better than any of the three we discussed previously. But there's one column here that looks especially suspicious to me. Hypothesis 4 predicts that the rate of 5 star CEs will be higher in multi-rolls than in single pulls. Not only does the data suggest that's not true, the data in fact suggests that the rate of 5 star CEs is lower in multi-rolls than in single pulls. Thankfully, we have 8 more new hypotheses to test out, and some of them explain this dispute pretty well. Now let's be honest, this video would be entirely too long if I explained how to calculate the percentages for the remaining 8 theories, but I'll pin a comment with my calculations so you can look them over in the comments section if you'd like to. Skipping to the results though, these are pretty interesting. We actually end up with a tie between hypothesis 6 and 11. Now, neko mataf, neko mataf, you... Neko, neko Mataf, Neko Matafuyu posted 46 multi rolls in the comments section, and Forever the Fated shared 52 multi rolls in a private message. 
I also got one more private message from Arash, which included a spreadsheet with links to live streams from Zis and the counts of 131 multi-rolls there. Of course, I have to caveat this data by saying I didn't get to watch all of these rolls myself but the numbers do line up reasonably well with the other data I've recorded so far. And if you're willing to trust this information, you can see that Hypothesis 11 pulls ahead of Hypothesis 6 by a reasonable margin. So is this data reliable? The fact that it all matches reasonably well leads me to think that, yeah, maybe it is. The biggest warning flag for me is actually my own data. I have far too many 3-star CEs and not enough 4-star CEs to match anyone else. It's possible I'm just unlucky though, and if you take my date out entirely, Hypothesis 11 looks even more accurate. But is this enough to conclude definitively? I guess that's somewhat up to you, but here's why I'm inclined to think so. Number 1. The percentages match very well. No single type of card is off by more than one half of 1%, and in total they aren't off by more than 1.5%. Number 2. This method makes sense. It doesn't tweak the percentages for gold servants at all, leaving them the same as single pulls, which is what people will reasonably expect, and it is the percents they advertise. That's not true for other hypotheses, like number 6. Number 6 is also weird because it uses elimination logic for the servant only roll and bumping logic for the 4 star or better rolls. Hypothesis 11 uses the bumping logic in both cases. And number three, our expectations about bias work in favor of Hypothesis 11. The reported rate of 5 star servants is just a tiny bit above the expected average, which could be the result of some people neglecting to post a set of really poor rolls. If you look at Hypothesis 6, you can see we're actually pretty far below the expected rate of 5 star servants, which contradicts the expected effect of bias. So if we can assume Hypothesis 11 is in fact the definitive way the game is programmed, then what can we conclude? Are multi-rolls better than single pulls? When it comes to gold servants, either 5 star or 4 star, the odds actually are exactly the same either way. But multi-rolling will increase the rate of 3 star servants by 1.6% and the rate of 4 star CEs by 6.8%. Multi-rolls decrease the rate of 3 star CEs by 8%, which is probably a good thing. The most notable downside is that the rate of 5 star CEs, which is already pretty low, goes down by another 0.4%. This is a bit annoying if you're like me and still trying to collect a few more K-scopes. So temper your expectations and pick the rolling strategy that works best for the type of cards you're looking for. Remember, these are averages applied across thousands of rolls, and luck is still going to be a huge factor in each individual summon. So I wish you all EX luck on the Sanzang banner and on all future banners you find yourself rolling on. And if you made it through what I'm pretty sure is going to be a much longer than average video for my channel, I want to offer my sincere and heartfelt thank you. It's the suggestions and curiosity of the community that drives me to make this kind of video, and I really found it pretty interesting. So one more time, just for good measure, thanks for watching.